Hello, I'm Becky Safe. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use ProQ3, which is a supercharged parametric dynamic EQ from FabFilter. It is insane what this EQ is capable of doing. And I'm going to show you all the different features throughout this video. So if you do want to skip to your favorite section, the timestamps are below in the description. Before we get into the video though, I just want to let you know that I do stream on Twitch three times a week, long form music production. So if you want to jump into the streams or even into the Discord music production community, then the links to those are below as well as my brand new Ableton Live 11 course. All right, let's jump into the video. So this is Pro Q3 and in order to insert a filter, you're just going to double click on an area and you now have a bell curve. You can also add a filter just by clicking on the line and dragging up and down. So this EQ at the moment is on this middle track. So if we just play it. <laughs> To change your filter types, you can click on the filter on the node and it will highlight it. And then you can come up here and you can select your different filter shapes. So we have a high pass here. We have a high shelf, a low pass. So you can cycle through the different shapes here as well as down here at the bottom, you actually have the filter types with their names next to them. So if you're a bit new on filter types and you want to do a high shelf, you just click that and you can have a high shelf. There's also a third place where your filter types are. I don't really use this as it's a bit long to get to, but the drop down menu here, you can come down and you can come to shape. And now you have all the different filter types here as well. You can change your slope in this menu as well. So if you wanted it to be sharper, you just come down to slope and let's say we want to do a 96 dB per octave. And now we have a super sharp slope. You also have that down the bottom here as well. So if you wanted to change it down at the bottom, you can do that. And you can also narrow and widen the Q, which is the amount of frequencies that are affected by this particular filter either side of the notch. If you just click on the notch and then hold down control on a PC or command on a Mac, and then you drag up and down, you can change the slope like that around the queue. If you want to change the frequency, the position along the horizontal axis as to where this filter is, you can drag on the filter and just move it left and right. And you can also change the frequency here down the bottom so you can move it left and right. You can also right click on the node. So instead of coming down to this drop down menu, you can right click on the node and you have the same menu here again. You also have stereo placement. So stereo placement, we have left, right stereo and mid side EQ as well. So if you click on left, it's going to just be a bell on the left side. And if you click on right, it's just going to be a bell on the right side. Also, you have the option down the bottom here again, so you can see it's selected right. We can go back to stereo or we can do the mid band and the mid band is now got a bell. Now, if you wanted to split this, you can come down here and split. And now you'll see that you have a bell curve on a mid band and on the side band as well. So if we have a listen. Now, say you've added a bell curve to your EQ and you just want to listen to the particular frequencies within that frequency range, you can play your track and you can audition using the headphone icon. Hold down on it. If you want to amplify the sound, just drag up. If you want to reduce it, Drag down. You're not actually changing the shape of the curve. You're just listening to what it would be like if you did a cut or if you did a boost. If you want to disable your band, you just turn it off here. It doesn't disappear. It just disables it. And then you can audition what it sounds like with and without the filter.
You can also AB your EQ. So let's just turn this filter back on. I'm going to just add another one. And then say you wanted to do some different EQ processing, but you're not sure which one you want to pick. You just press the AB at the top. It resets it. And then you could do some different EQ. And then you can go back to the original one and cycle between the two. You also have an undo button here, so you could go back and undo. Let's look at pitch and frequency. So you'll notice on the bottom of this EQ here that there's a keyboard. You can actually hide the keyboard by clicking the icon here. But this keyboard, if you go along the bottom, you'll see that there's notes. So if you wanted a specific note to be isolated, you can select G3. We can zoom in by dragging up and down. So we can really hone in on that particular area. And so let's go to G3, which is here. I'm gonna go up and you'll see at the bottom that we now have a little bump, a little node that is bouncing across the keyboard. You'll also see in the display box above the node that you can see a G3. It also shows you how far either side of G3 you actually are. So at the moment, we're at G3, but we're minus 19 away from the exact tone. If you hold over the waveform when the track is playing and you just let your mouse sit over the spectral analyzer, you'll actually see the peak frequencies. So if you have something that is harsh and quite resonant in your track, say you have a resonant snare drum, for example, you can hover your mouse over the spectral analyzer and it will show you the peak frequencies that you might want to cut down. So I'm going to show you that. Hold the mouse over, let it sit there. And now you can see the peak frequencies. But maybe you wanna cut some of them down. So you go up to the top onto the node and then you pull it down. Hold over again and pull down. And pull down. So you can see how we've made some EQ cuts just by hovering over the waveform. Really cool analysis of the waveform there. Now we have these filters set, we can actually hover over them to see what frequencies they are. And you'll see down the bottom here as well, it will tell you where they are on the keyboard. If you wanted to move them, you could drag here or you could drag on the keyboard and it will snap exactly to that particular note. So before we had it that where it fluctuated either side of the G, now we can drag our nodes so that they sit exactly on the exact key that we want them to sit on. One of the standout features of Pro-Q3 is the ability to make your filters dynamic, which means that they will respond to the waveform as your track is playing. So in order to access the dynamic features, come down to the gain control, whereas this will turn your volume up and down in decibels, on the outside, you do have the option to attenuate the dynamic response of that particular filter. If you come here, you'll see it's on auto, but actually you can attenuate the threshold when you click on auto. And so if we play the track, If you drag the slider down, it will act as a reduction. And if you drag the slider up, it will add as expansion. So depending on the waveform and depending on the settings that you have, if you wanted to reduce the peak, or you could increase it so it expands. You can also sidechain your EQ with another track. So in Ableton, we have the sidechain option here. I'm going to sidechain this particular track with a break. So let's play it. To activate the sidechain, come into the EQ and press this button here. And you'll see now that the break is overlaid on top of the waveform that we have on our original track. and the dynamic EQ is responding. To turn off or disable your dynamic EQ, you have the on off switch here. You also have the X. So if we just press play, 
off and X. One of the standout features of this EQ is its ability to analyze other tracks in your project that also have a Pro-Q3 on them, and it will show you where your music is competing for frequency space. And then you can use that to do some subtractive EQ so that you get a clearer mix overall. So I have a Pro-Q3 on this middle track. I also have a Pro-Q3 on the top pad bell. If I play them and we come down to this analyzer section here, we can see where our congested frequencies are. It's gonna show in red. By clicking on the pad bell, you can see that the two spectral analyzers of each track are now on top of each other. So you can visually see where the different peaks are on both of your tracks. And you can see here it's red. So I might want to cut here. Finally, just to show you the settings on the outside of the EQ, if you just drag this into the middle here, you can change the size of the EQ display on the screen by clicking on the bottom here. If you wanted to have it mini, you could have it small, you could have it very large. And then at the top here, this is also full screen. Down the bottom, you have MIDI Learn. So if you have a controller and you want to assign different parameters to the controller, click on MIDI Learn, and now you can click on the control and you can assign it to your MIDI controller. You also have your different EQ phases, so natural phase and linear phase, if you wanted to select those along the bottom. And you can also disable your EQ settings. They don't disappear, they just get disabled and you can enable them. You also have your gain scale, so you can move everything collectively up and down and you have your master gain control as well so you can do your output gain and you could increase or decrease the output there along the bottom. On the right here, we have the decibels. So at the moment it's going up to plus 30 and down to minus 30. If you wanted to change this visually, you can go to the top here and you could go to 12. And now you're seeing plus 12 and minus 12. It doesn't change anything sonically. It's just what you can visually see on the screen. So if you wanna have a bit more of an intricate view, you just have your plus 12 and your minus 12 there, and you can go down to three decibels if you want to, or back to 30. And that is how to use Pro-Q3. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving a like and subscribing to the channel, as it will help the channel grow and reach more people like you. You. Thank you for watching. If you do want to check out more content, remember I do stream on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Becky Safe. And we also have the Discord below, as well as the Ableton Live 11 course. Check that out in the links in the description. And thank you again for watching the video, and I'll see you for another one. Bye.